You're a piece of shit. I'm a piece of shit. You're a piece of shit. I feel bad. So should I just be like, bloody bollocks? Two women, no toy. I'm doing pretty good right now. You're gonna have to do better, Nick. That's unacceptable. Who just names their kid Toby? I want you to get completely naked. Do you want to do you want to say like your catchphrase or whatever? Then you have like a catchphrase or something. I don't remember it. So like, what what's the thing that you say? So much is going on. I don't even know if I can remember. Let me see if I can muster something up. Top of the week, laddies. It's the first day of the week, and it's me, Nick Green. Everybody, this is Nick Green, also known as Nick is not green on YouTube. Hello. Uh, and Nick has expressed like interest in acting in the past to me, so I said, hey, let me take this this really, really terrible actor and make him like actually learn how to do it correctly. Because we all know Nick Nick can't act. Like he's the fucking worst. Rude, but okay. I As of right now, you know, people are like trying to cast him as James Potter and shit. And he's just he's not gonna do it. Cause he's fucking terrible. So like we gotta <laughs> We gotta help Nick out so he can do it correctly. That hurts, but I'll go, you know, I'll still stick with you. You know, you, I, I trust you. Although you just insulted me really badly and like, I just feel like that's not something my acting coach should really do. I, I, I don't know the world of acting. Maybe it's like tough love, you know? Oh yeah, we, we all hate each other. That's like, that's okay. like an actual thing. Like I hate every single person I've ever worked with. Cool, cool. Okay, so I know, okay, I'm in the headspace. I'm expecting you to really dig into me. I'll try to be mean. Ah, uh, Connor. I, that's all I got. <laughs> I got I get, you know, maybe I'll get better. You're gonna have to do better, Nick. That's unacceptable. Okay, okay. That's absolutely. Sorry, sir. It is my job today and my duty to teach you everything I've learned in the past four years of college, being an acting major, or musical theater major, as fast as I can. So I can't be that hard. Yo, oh, oh yeah, no, yeah, definitely not. Four years of training, not hard at all. No. I think I could do it easily. Bitch. What was that? What did you say after not hard at all? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say anything. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, cool, yeah. No, sorry, I think it was in the feedback or something. Lesson one, we're jumping right in right away. Okay. So lesson one is called public privacy. Basically what it is, it's allowing yourself to be seen in vulnerable moments that you would usually not be seen in by others. Like getting ready for a date or like comforting yourself after like a loved one has passed or 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 like setting up for a little a little a little romantic night with a loved one if you know what I'm uh, saying. Okay. So you want me to take my shirt off right now? Oh, I want you to get completely naked. That's acting 101. <laughs> I mean, that's the industry. <laughs> we learn in basic acting to get completely naked. Are you are you willing to do that? Listen, I mean as much as that makes me uncomfortable and it's not gonna fly past the YouTube, you know, TOS, I think I think I I will do whatever it takes. Okay, good, because you have to. <laughs> Lesson two is called the reality of doing. So basically what that means is when you're on stage doing something, you're actually doing that thing. The first thing we did in my acting class, basic acting, my professor hid my glasses and I actually had to like look around the room to find my glasses. So when you're, when you're on stage doing something, it's a lot more convincing to the audience if you're actually doing the thing that you're supposed to be doing as opposed to pretending to do it. So like counting pencils or like tearing up a picture of your ex girlfriend or like other things <laughs> <laughs> like getting completely naked yes yeah like getting completely naked you want to actually get completely naked okay so those two things go hand in hand the public privacy and reality of doing and you put them together and you get a little thing called the life in the room which is basically an activity you do before or during a scene where you're doing something that is meaningful to the scene that you're doing and it's meaningful to you okay so, let's take a look at the side that you picked out before we started the video. Okay. So the side is between two characters, Reed and Jake. I'm casting you as Reed because fuck you. Okay, okay, I can respect that. So can you, can you like take a look at the script and like see like what you could theoretically do during the scene that's meaningful? Okay, so basically the scene is, I assume two buddies. You know, he says, can you shut up and finish with your gift, please? So maybe they're going to... Toby's birthday party? No, he's not born yet. <laughs> he's not born yet. <laughs> you, you're, you're right there, Nick. You're right there. So there's some birthday party. So, so during the scene, it'll be Reed, you know, so you, you're putting together this birthday gift, for, like in an angry manner while he's complaining. Maybe <laughs> half correct. We don't play emotions, so you wouldn't say like, "Oh, I'm doing this in an angry way," okay. right? You would do it and throughout the text find the emotion through the text. Okay. So you don't want to start out being like, "I'm angry." 
angry. So you're a fucking idiot. Yeah, no, I now that I now that you explained it, I feel like a dunce because that makes a lot of sense. I'll say it. You are a dunce. Okay, okay. So do you do you have anything like near you that you could use to like get ready a gift? Um, I've got a I've got a big plastic bag and I got a bunch of candy and popcorn next to me. I could maybe I could maybe pour pour that out and then you know put it in the bag. You gonna you gonna give a newborn candy and popcorn? Okay, that's a good. I have uh, a bag with a bunch of clothes in it. Are they baby clothes? No, they're. They're Nick clothes, but I, I will pretend. <laughs> or it, maybe it's just a giant baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Toby's like a, this massive baby. I can do that. That works. Okay. All right, let's practice it. Get the bag, get the clothes. We're going right now, Nick. Let's go. Hurry, ah, okay. hurry, 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 hurry. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. You don't have to read the lines. Just, just pack up the present. Okay. I'm doing it. Oh, Nick, is that how- that's how you're gonna present the clothing to- to this newborn baby? You're just gonna shove it in a bag? You're not gonna fold it? What- what's going on, Nick? Are you insane? Uh, Look, it's bad enough you're giving a newborn clothes in a Target bag. <laughs> Come on, dude, what are you doing? At least fold it. Have the courtesy to fold the clothes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, professor. Is that what you say? Do you say yes, professor, to your professor? This is difficult. You... There, oh, that's so much better. Oh, this this is gonna be such a nice present. Gonna be such a nice present for little Toby. Now, oh, oh, he's bringing out the box. Can you blur this in post? <laughs> I don't want everyone to see my box. I think these are used. No one needs to know that Nick wears underwear. Do you like this shirt? It's pretty awesome, right? I wish I wish it was my birthday party, so I'd be getting that as a gift. I'm excited for Toby to get this. <laughs> this is already folded. Okay, that's a lie. A little bit folded. Okay, there we go. I mean, I got the gift. Absolutely amazing, Nick. You did it. Oh. You did an absolutely beautiful job. Thank you. You passed. You have passed the first two lessons. Let's go. Lesson three is called crafting, and basically crafting is you're you're making the backstory for your character, so that when you go out on stage, you don't look like a buffoon. You know who you are and what you're doing. Okay. Craft the character. Who is Reed to you? Who do you think Reed is? So Reed is sort of this like college kid, very outspoken about his belief. He doesn't hold back when he wants to say something. He's always very you know sporadic, kind of hot headed, and he has a lot of sex too. You th you think Reed has a lot of sex? Yeah, that's why they cast him in the role. That's not why you were cast in the role. It's the exact opposite. You're actually wrong. Reed does not have a lot of sex. Reed is a virgin. You had that written down somewhere? That was in the- that's canon? <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, it's- it's canon. That's why I cast you. Well, that's what acting's all about. If I'm a good enough actor, I can portray, I can make people believe that that's not true, right? What, whatever you say, man. Sure. To you, Reed has a lot of sex. That's- Totally fine. You're allowed to do that. Okay, cool. So how did how did you meet Jake? Jake and I met college orientation freshman year. We didn't like each other because we were going after the same girl. But over time, we realized that girl sucked. And we became best friends over it. And sophomore year, we decided to be roommates. And ever since then, we've stuck side by side together through the ups and lows. And we actually had a really big moment last semester when Jake's grandfather passed away and we both flew out to his hometown to attend his grandfather's wake. And I actually saw Jake cry for the first time and I comforted him in his tears. You just like went over the next point as well. I just asked you how, how you guys met, but you just did, you just did the three big events. Oh, wow, okay. You're ahead of the curve, Nick. You're learning. Yeah, three big events. College orientation, moving in together, Jake's grandfather's funeral. How'd that funeral make you feel personally? Well, did you laugh? <laughs> no. <laughs> you sicko. Jake had a very big moment where he was very stubborn and he didn't really want to go because his grandfather was always very cold to him. But the moment he showed up and he saw his family super vulnerable in front of him, I got to see Jake vulnerable for the first time since we'd been friends. He'd never opened up to me like that before and he told me how this death in his family wasn't just about his grandfather, but it was about him learning what the loss of life was because it was the first big event in his life where someone, you know, passed away and affected other people in his family, you know? I'm on the verge of tears over here, Nick. I'm acting, yes. So what was it like looking at the dead corpse? Oh my God, is this part of it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is lesson four. Now we move on to the last part of 
crafting, which is your your POV, which stands for point of view. Okay, so what do, what do you think that means, Nick? It means that I want to put myself in the character's shoes and talk about things as if I'm him? No. Okay. <laughs> a point of view is uh, how you feel about your other scene partner. So the POV phrase consists of an adjective, an adjective, and a noun. Let's bring Ben in over here. Ben, everybody. Oh. Say hi, Ben. This is my friend, Ben. Hey, Ben. If I had a POV phrase on Ben, it would be my goofy, silly friend. Well, so you use something stronger. You than use something friend. stronger than friend. You don't use friend. Okay, you get the gist. Get get the fuck out of here, Ben. <laughs> That's enough. What is your POV phrase? So adjective, adjective, noun for your friend Jake. What does Jake mean to you personally, Reed? So my my POV phrase would be Jake is my. I know the word I want, but I'm trying to put it into one adjective. Express it in multiple words, and you can narrow it down. So I want to say that Jake doesn't like to be too outspoken sometimes about things. You know, he likes to hold back. I'm sort of like the yin to his yang. Timid. Timid. You know, I think inside, real deep inside, Reed values the fact that Jake is the one person who who he trusts. Jake was always so defensive in his childhood. You know, that's what his mom told me at the funeral. She was like, you know, she pulled me off to the side while Jake was, you know, talking to his cousins. And he was, she was like, listen, Jake's always been such a, has, has such a hard shell his whole life. And the first time I've ever seen him really beam when he talks to someone is around you. And then she asked if we're lovers, which we're not. We're not lovers. It's a strictly, you know, heterosexual roommate relationship. Uh, well, okay. All right. I mean, if you, if you say so, I mean, it's kind of weird that you just kind of threw out there that that you weren't gay. Uh, I don't know if it's that weird. It's because of the whole mom at the funeral thing. But well, you didn't you didn't have to go into that whole part of the mom at the funeral thing. You could have just mentioned the mom at the funeral. You didn't have to mention that she thought you were gay. Unless you're actually gay and scared of people thinking you're gay. No, 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 that's not it. Reed does not think that. He had the thing with the girl in the first place. And although the thoughts intrude sometimes when it's late at night and he, you know, is fighting his demons and sometimes he wonders if he may like boys behind the curtain. That's not true. Also for the people watching this is in the acting scene this is not like me reflecting i don't want people to be like does nick actually believe this no i i don't want to like queer bait anybody <laughs> i was just saying <laughs> why does reed only like boys behind the curtain that seems a little suspicious no it's not like that though it's not like that though it's like in his head but he has no feelings for jake and that's an honest truth he knows that he knows he can confide in jake and although jake has a very big history of his family being very homophobic. He knows that Jake does not have those beliefs, but he's also afraid to go against his family sometimes. Sometimes he's a little bit of a coward, but Reed would never call him that. Are you sure? It might be deep down in his chest. It might come out in a fight in a few years when they really have a climaxing moment of their friendship. But right now in the storyline, he, him and Jake are pretty tight knit, but they do butt heads because of their personalities, but it's always all in love. Yeah, it's like a very Bert and Ernie situation here. I was gonna say, I was gonna say Jake is my timid, lovable, and then hyphenated partner in crime. Partner in crime, that's good. Yes. That's really good. So he's your timid, lovable partner in crime. Yeah, I think it really encapsulates who he is in our relationship. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful, Nick. Now we get onto the hard stuff. This is really hard. This is gonna require you to really open yourself up Ooh, okay. and be honest with me, okay? So we're moving on to something called moment to moment, which basically means we're gonna start looking at each other. We're gonna start looking each other in the eyes. <sighs> It's a lot less hard when I'm where it's not in person. It's pretty easy to look you in the eyes with Discord. But I do, I am really bad at looking people in the eyes in real life. I feel, I, I do, I think too much about it. I look them in the eyes and then I start looking off to the side and then I look them in the eyes for a couple seconds and then look back. You just said though, you just said the phrase, I feel. And it's funny you say that because <laughs> moment to moment is also known as I feels. Oh. So basically right now in this moment, you express to your partner how you're feeling. So like if I were to look at you, I would say, I feel nervous and then you would repeat back you would repeat back to me you feel nervous and we would go back and forth with that until you uh, want to say how you feel and we go back and forth like that okay and it, gets, it gets real it gets real deep oh my gosh I'm a little worried and you have to let what I'm feeling affect you does that make sense I guess so I don't really know where I would go from there but maybe I'll just let the scene maybe I'll just let it you just let it play out I feel calm you feel calm I feel calm you feel calm I feel calm I feel awkward you feel awkward i feel awkward you're laughing at me i'm laughing at you <laughs> you're a piece of shit oh my god i'm a piece of shit you're a piece of shit i'm a piece of shit you're a piece of shit i feel bad i don't believe you you don't believe me i don't believe you you're laughing at me i i feel 
caught in a lie. <laughs> you feel caught in a lie? You're a liar. I'm a liar. You're a liar? I'm a liar. You're lying to me. I am lying to you. You're an asshole. I'm an asshole. You're laughing at me. <laughs> I, I feel... I I can't stop. I feel, uh, I feel vulnerable. <laughs> Good. That's the entire point of the exercise, Nick. Ah! <laughs> All right, Nick. I, I'm, I'm giving you a big old pass on, on moment to moment work. Now on to lesson five, which is objective. Now, what does the word objective mean to you, Nick? Objective means to me that it is a 100% true fact. Think more like, like a video game. Oh, <laughs> objective to me means... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you are the worst actor i've ever worked no wait objective to be means something you have to achieve in every scene there's an objective and you want to have the ability to complete that objective whether or not you can so what is your objective in the scene that we're working on i need jake to understand my frustration okay now add your pov phrase into that i need my timid lovable partner in crime to understand my frustration that okay yeah no that's 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 good enough you have officially passed lesson five which means you have officially passed basic acting, Nick. Let's go. You are not a basic actor anymore. I mean, you are, you, you're basic and now I guess you're an actor. So like, I guess you're a basic actor, but like in the acting sense, you're not like a basic actor. Does that make okay, sense? Okay, yeah, I guess so. So we're on to intermediate acting now. This one is much shorter. There's like two things we learned in, in intermediate acting. The first thing is beats. What do you think a beat is in a scene? A major point that, you know, kind of defines the scene. You think that's correct? No. <laughs> but I'm... You're right. It's oh. not correct. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not correct, Nick. <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, I just shot it out of the dark. So a beat is basically a shift in tone or power in the scene. So like if we look at scene two, the one we're working on, after, can you just shut up and finish your gift please? I think would be the first big beat. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cause it's like a shift in tone. Okay, yeah, yeah. And a shift in, in power of who has the power. Cause throughout the scene, Reed has the power. And then here, when he says, shut up, Jake is taking the power away from Reed. Yeah, because he's like demanding something. That's a beat. That's pretty much the only way I can explain it without taking like 20 years. You may be getting the entirety of the acting education, Nick, but you're getting the abridged version. So like, don't get too cocky after this. I was under the impression that I wasn't, that I was getting the full version here and that we were just sort of like... Well, the full version is going to take like two full years. Well, yeah, I thought that's, one what, that's why it took year. me a while to set up. I literally thought we were going to sit here for like a while. I have things to do after this, Nick, okay? I'm doing things. I'm not I'm not a little loser like you. I actually do things with my life. Cool. Yeah, no. Let's keep going. Uh, now we have actions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep asking you. What do you think an action is? An action is when someone does something. No. You get one more guess. One more guess of what an action is. An action is when a character? Uh, those are the only two things I can think of. An action is when a character. No! <laughs> is that is that final answer? Oh, oh, oh. An action is when a character's actions are defined through the text. There's emotion put into what they're doing because of the text. You're actually like right there. That was pretty close. So an action is a verb that we use to help you get your objective. And it's basically the way you say your line. Give me a verb. Smack. Smack. Okay. So if I were to smack a line, I would try to smack the person with the words. Okay. So let's pull up one of your lines. I want to see you try to s smack Jake. My name is... <laughs> <laughs> I messed it up in the first two words. My name is cool as shit, okay? That, okay, that, that was, that was, okay, you smacked him. There you go, try stab. My name is cool as shit, okay? Oh, right at the end, that was good. Now, now pull that through the whole line and be honest with yourself, okay? Acting's about honesty. If you're not honest, there's no point. You have to mean what you're saying. My name, <laughs> <laughs> my name is cool as shit. Okay? It's more like my name is cool as shit. Like you're repeatedly stabbing someone. That's good. I like that. My name is cool as shit. Okay? Much better. That is a good, that is a good stab. So words like smack and stab are what we call hard actions. Now we have other things called soft actions, which is like caress. Give me like a, a verb you would think would be soft. Rub. <laughs> Rub. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's an action. You could you could rub him. Try try rub. Pick a different line and try rub. All right. Jeez. 
I'm sorry. You, that's your that's your rub. I just felt like it was like a. All right, jeez. I'm so, like rubbing. It. Try caress. All right, jeez. I'm sorry. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna give you like a solid B on actions. Everything else has been an A so far. I see how that could take a few more classes to actually, you know, get good at. You have officially passed intermediate acting, buddy. Boom! Now we get on to the really fucking hard shit. This is advanced acting one. Dude, you put me through big through basic and, and intermediate acting and this is the most effort I've been ever, you know, told to give in a collab video. <laughs> like, I'm like, <laughs> like, I'm being put through the ringer. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've never had someone like really test me here. And this is tough for me. Like, I'm trying my best. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. You've heard of the POV. Now we're working on the OPOV. What do you think the O stands for? The audience POV. <laughs> 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 the other point of view. You were just so close, Nick. Uh, 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 opposite point of view. Give yourself a pat on the back for that one. I think that's the first time I've actually given myself a pat on the back after all these years and it felt wrong. Maybe that's why I've been so sad. People keep recommending therapy. <laughs> they say I need to get on meds, but I've never tried patting myself on the back and that felt really good. You actually learn patting yourself on the back in therapy. That's the only thing they tell you to do. Oh, I've been going to the wrong therapy then. I've just been meeting with some guy in like the alley behind my apartment. What do you think your opposite point of view is? I want to see how jake perceives reed no how do i perceive myself no okay how do i don't think you're gonna get this one your opposite point of view is things that you personally as a person could never do like uh murder or racism homophobia they're things that you personally would never do like in class you guys like really let into your oh yeah wow i did a scene where i was a cannibal i had like stuffed my clothes and i put like a black sheet over like and made it look like a dead body and i like took a knife and i cut a hole in the middle of the sheet and I like reached into the body and I pulled out like organs and I like started eating them in class. Oh my god. I'm not gonna make you do any of that. I just don't know what I can have you do. T.A. Ben, you got any ideas? <laughs> Even T.A. Ben is stumped. I don't know. We're gonna make Reed a cannibal. Like you were just caught munching on a man named Toby. Oh, so I ate the unborn child. So maybe that's maybe that's why you're trying to keep him home. So he doesn't find out that, that his sister and the unborn child are both eaten now. So should I just be like... Blah, 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 blah. You can do whatever you want, buddy. This, this is gonna be impossible to teach, so just just have fun. Because I'm about to be stuck in a room with a bunch of people that I don't know for God knows how long. You know I don't like situations like that, so please forgive me for trying to let off a little steam before I'm trapped in hell. That was that was pretty good. That was pretty good. That's me picking human out of my teeth. That was a really good choice. So there's one other thing we learned in AA1, something called impediment. Can you imagine what an impediment would be? I'm just thinking of a speech impediment and I'm like, what? Take that, something that makes something harder for somebody to do and like expand that. So you could be like high or drunk, a condition where something is, is harder. Oh, okay. What are three things that are distinctly different when you're drunk than when you're sober. Well, I have a headache. I get very sleepy. I talk a lot. Do you slur your speech at all? Yeah, I'd say so. You get like, you get like woozy. I do get woozy, yes. Let's let's make you drunk, okay? Because I'm about to be stuck in a room with a bunch of people that I don't know for God knows how long. I'm doing pretty good right now. <laughs> I, that's not what you're supposed to say in the middle. I was like, that's pretty good. Do it from the top and don't don't fuck up. Because I'm about to be stuck in a room with a bunch of people that I don't know for God knows how long. You don't know. You know I don't like situations like that. So please forgive me for trying to let off a little steam before I'm trapped in hell. There you go. That's Drunk Nick. Who've officially learned how to be a cannibal. Yeah. You have officially learned how to be drunk. You have passed advanced acting. I'm a professional. One. Now we have advanced acting two. Oh my gosh, okay. Which is slightly easier. It's accents. Oh, okay. We do we do two specific accents. We do a high southern accent and we do British, like a more proper. We're gonna try this because I know like whenever you do like a British or a southern accent, it's just atrocious. I will I will give it to you. It's uh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I was 
I was kidding. <laughs> that's that's a true fact though. So so we're gonna we're gonna work on some accents with you. Okay, I like that. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna start with British. All right. So what you do when you have a British accent is you want to move everything forward in your mouth. And there's a there's a sentence that we came up with in acting class to help us get into the British accent. Are you, you ready to hear it? Are you ready to try it? Okay, I I think so. Bloody bollocks, two women, no time. Dude, this is gonna be so bad. <laughs> <laughs> bloody, bloody bollocks. Two women, no time. Bloody bollocks, two women, no time. Close enough. All right, so now we're gonna try a high southern accent, which is which is the southern accent you get in places like Georgia, like Savannah. There's a difference between high southern and hard R, which is much more lower. I've only really ever done the deep southern, so this is like the first time I've really done the high southern. So what I what I want you to say this time is, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I did not have <laughs> I'm going to British. So this is my deep southern. I'd be like, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. <laughs> so bad. We're almost there. We're almost there. Lift everything more. Pull it back in your mouth. I did not have s sexual relations with that woman. Yeah, there, there you go. You did, you did it, Nick. You did it. Oh, I'll take it. I'll take it. Currently, I'm in Advanced Acting 2, and we're learning the audition unit. Basically, we learn how to slate ourselves when we walk in. So you would walk into the room, and then you would introduce yourself, and then you would say what you're reading. So I, I would walk in and say, Hi, my name is Connor McDowell, and I will be reading Side 2 for Jake. Hi, my name is Nick Green, and I will be reading Side 2 for Reed. Okay, that was pretty good. You've gone through all four years of acting training. Now it's time for your final. Oh, okay. I'm not gonna have you incorporate any OPOV or impediments into this. I'm gonna bring in TA Ben. Things are getting real. Once Ben comes in the room, I'm like, I'm nervous because I know he's not gonna, there's gonna be no giggles or anything. Absolutely not. You're not allowed. No, no laughing allowed. Oh, I'm going to be, I'm gonna try to really be serious. I'm gonna give you a true audition here. I'm gonna be sitting over here where you can't see me. At one point, I'm gonna yell, go to I feels, and Ben is gonna start the I feels. You're gonna do it with Ben until I say, go to text. Okay, so when you say go to text, that means go back to the script. You're gonna slate yourself. You're gonna incorporate your crafting that we came up with. Try to incorporate some some actions into there. Find find a verb that you want to work with, soft or hard. Do whatever you want. As long as you feel the line works with that action, try it. All right. Are you are you ready? You ready for your final Nick? I'm ready. I'm I'm aware. I'm really nervous, but that, I'll save that for the I feels. All right, everybody. Welcome in, T A Ben. Let's let yay Ben. Yay. All right, Nick. Slate yourself and let's start. My name is Nick Green, and I'm reading for Reed. Who just names their kid Toby? My brother, <laughs> apparently. It's not even Tobias or anything, it's just Toby. What's your point? My, my point is that Toby is weird and no one should use it as a name for a child, it's not 1905. I don't think it's that bad. Well, sure, at least it's not Alistair or Bernard, but Toby's still pretty bad. Can you just shut up and finish your gift, please? Toby? That, that poor kid's gonna get bullied. That's my nephew, man, what the fuck? I'm not the one that named him. I'm just pointing out the obvious. Well, can you not point out the obvious when it comes to my immediate family? Like your dad's toupee or your sister's lazy eye? Why are you being such an asshole? <sighs> because I'm about to be stuck in a room with a bunch of people that I don't know for God knows how long. You, you don't know, you know I don't like situations like that, so please forgive me for trying to let off a little steam before I'm trapped in hell. I don't care that you need to let off steam. Just please don't be an asshole about it. Can you like, I don't know, do something else? Like what? You told me to finish with the gift, so I'm finishing with the gift. And then when we leave, I don't have time to do anything else. I mean, come on, the kid's name is Toby. <laughs> You're one to talk, Reed. My name is cool as shit, okay? <laughs> Whatever you say, saxophone. What? Because you use a reed when you play a saxophone. I don't think it's that hard to understand. It's not even spelled the same. Oh, so you can make fun of other people's names, but just not your name. You know me. I, I, you don't even know this kid. That's because he hasn't been born yet, dip, uh, shithead. Uh, all right. Go to my feels. Okay. Shithead. I'm a shithead? You're a shithead. I'm a shithead? You're a Nick, shithead. how does that make you feel? He's calling you a shithead. How does that make you feel? I feel like you don't care. You feel like I don't care? I feel like... What? 
You feel like what? I feel flustered. You feel flustered? You look sad. No, I, I'm. I I feel. I feel like I feel like I can't think of what to say. Go to text. Are you ready to go yet? Uh, yep. You're wearing that. What do you want me to wear? A suit? We're going to a hospital. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'm sorry, I'm just super stressed. No shit. Uh, I would be too if my blood nephew was gonna be named Toby. Dude, go to my on. fields. Go to my fields. Dude, come on. I I feel like I feel like you're not listening to me. You feel like I'm not listening to you? I feel hurt. You feel hurt. I feel hurt, Reed. I feel. <laughs> I'm not good at you feel that? I'm not good at I feel like you're making fun of me, Jake. I feel like you're making I am fun making of me. fun of you. Making He's fun making fun of you. How does that make you feel? He's making fun of you. I feel pissed. You feel pissed? I feel pissed off. You feel pissed off. What's under yeah, that? Yeah, like what's, what's under pissed off? I feel frustrated. Go to text. Go to text. Dude, come on. Sorry, Jake. Fucking Toby. Yeah! Woohoo! Yeah! 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 <laughs> All right, Ben, get out of my fucking chair. All right, bye. <laughs> oh! Congratulations, Nick. My first scene. You were able to take all of all of the training, and you did it in record time. Yes. You officially can be cast as James Potter. I'm allowing it. You guys hear that? I've got an acting coach. He's gonna allow it. And if you don't cast him. There is public execution involved. Yeah, we will rain down hellfire on the Harry Potter stan community. That was like, that was, I feel like, an experience that I've never gotten through a collab video. Like, that was pretty legit. I had a fun time, you know? It made me, and I think it's gonna make other people respect. I feel like there's probably a lot of shitheads out there who are like, why you gotta acting school? You gotta, what are you doing in acting school? You're just reading lines. Fucking take that, dad. But I did come to even respect more the work that actors put in and it also makes me wonder how there's so many bad actors out there that i watch on tv and i'm like i'm like you're not using your actions so now i realize how much work goes into really being a good actor and i respect that and you know even though i will never be at that level i will try my best when i get into the role and unfortunately you're gonna have to look up and be like i went to acting school for four years just to give nick another job as James Potter, what do I get from it? Nothing. That's the answer. I'm not gonna give you anything. I got I got one collab video, and then Nick yeah. just stole everything from me. He stole my wife. He stole my kids. I feel like shit. You feel like shit. <laughs> All right, Nick. Uh, plug plug your shit. Whatever you want. Your new channel. Whatever you, whatever you want to plug. Da da da. Nick is not gaming. The new channel and all my other stuff. Just freaking. You know, the counter will put it in the description, everything that you need. I gotcha, I gotcha. He'll handle it. Subscribe to Connor. Uh.